good morning to everyone. And thank you so much, Professor Karimi and uh, to OEA Publishing to set up this wonderful uh, webinar where we can talk to you. Uh, we've gone through the agenda and I'd uh, like to thank uh, uh, Complex Engineering Systems uh, for co-sponsoring the uh, competition for uh, next year that uh, Tim would get into more detail on. So I don't want to forget. Thank you very much for your sponsorship. Um, a little bit about my background. I'm right now the uh, president-elect of the North American Fuzzy Information Processing Society. I'm very happy to share that Barnabash Bede, professor from DigiPen, who is the current president of the North American Fuzzy Information Processing Society is online and he was an active participant uh, in our competition last year. NAFIS, this organization is also going to co-sponsor the competition for next year. So um, when we have the Q&A sessions, Barnabash, please feel free to talk about uh, what you feel about this and uh, NAFIS in general. Um, so, you know, I want to start with a story that took place just about a week ago, okay? Cruise robot taxis. We're talking about autonomous systems and intelligent autonomous systems and the impact that can have on society, right? So, cruise robot taxis. We're building these self-driving uh, vehicles to improve life in our cities. They're safe. They've, uh, you know, we're talking about big business here, thirty billion dollars. Uh, they're shared, all electric, of course, because it's a start off. Uh, the first time integrating that into society in the United States, the vehicles are restricted 30 miles an hour, only between 6, um, you know, 10 p.m. and 6, uh, they can operate between 10, 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. They cannot go downtown or on, onto highways and are prevented from driving in bad weather. Now, what happened? They take fares, passengers, right? What happened was that on the 30th of June, an eyewitness told the San Francisco examiner that about 20 of them clustered and blocked the traffic. Uh, something had caused uh, the vehicles to cluster together. And uh, while it took about 20 minutes for the maintenance team to come on the spot, it took a few hours for them to manually, you know, uh, resolve the problem and to uh, be able to uh, alleviate these cars. So the question as engineers is that what happened, right? It does not appear to be a singular mechanical failure because the same problem occurred in 20 vehicles at exactly the same time. So what caused this unintended malfunction? Could it be some sort of a software bug? Uh, and I'm guessing, okay, uh, because we don't know the real story. It could be something malicious, external intervention, cyber interference, human machine AI in interface issues. And <clears throat> now the question to us as society is would we trust such a system to transport our loved ones? What if that rendezvous point happened to be, you know, somewhere other than uh, a blocked road, somewhere off the Golden Gate Bridge? If you can get a bunch of autonomous vehicles to cluster around a point. Now, that means you've taken over some navigation system. That could be a problem. And, 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 and when we are talking about intelligent autonomous systems and scaling that up in order for it to be economically viable, trust is a major issue, right? And we need an explanation, an answer to this why question. And so the pursuit of this why does autonomous vehicles behave in the way they behave is the start of the journey that we are trying to shed more light on. Now, what about policymakers, right? So this is also very recent, uh, June uh, 2022. I saw this about you know a week ago, the US Department of Defense Responsible AI Strategy and Implementation Pathway put together by the Deputy Secretary of Defense. So this is policy. And what does this policy say just to summarize, trust in AI from the Department of Defense's point of view will enable the department to modernize its war fighting capabilities across a range of combat, non-combat applications. Okay, and without trust, war fighters and leaders will not employ AI effectively and the American people will not support it. Okay, so 
trust is now not just a nice to have attribute. It is not enough to have a black box provide you with a prediction. You want to be able to trust it. And when we talk about trust, we need to validate that. We need to be able to certify that. We need to be able to say, okay, I can assure the public, I can assure the war fighter, I can assure the user, okay, that we can trust this system to do exactly what we want it to do, no more, no less. Uh, and so the DOD now is taking its commitment to responsible AI, that's AI, not AJ, seriously and is actively pursuing methods to make AI implementation safer and more effective. So the shift in the past decade was all about performance. If you could come up with good performance, that was adequate. But now we're going beyond that. We need to ensure that our AI is extremely trustworthy. You can see the schematic from that uh, uh, report. The report is publicly available. Uh, we, we are looking at it from a bigger zoom than we thought possible. Requirements, validation, the trust, it, it, and it all funnels down to, okay, we're talking about AI ethics, and then the responsible AI strategy and implementation all funnels down to trust. And, and having to have a very clear policy on trustworthy AI is uh, the Europeans have been uh, talking about it. And right now we see that uh, uh, in the United States, this is getting more and more uh, traction as well. Um, the need for explainable AI, DARPA a couple of years ago came up with a program. So they've had the need and they've explored that. Why are we doing something and not something else? When do we succeed? When do we fail? When can I trust you? I'm sure all of you have seen this uh, chart. I don't want to dwell into it a bit too much. Um, and we want to get answers. We want to understand that why. Why did these vehicles on June the 30th cluster around a certain point? Why did the system fail? And when can I know that I can trust it? And when uh, has it come up with that sort of a malfunction? So you wanna define AI, explainable AI, which is one of the attributes that will lead us to that trustworthiness, right? We'll have the ability to explain the rationale, characterize the strengths and the weaknesses and convey an understanding of how they will behave in the future. Uh, again, another definition of uh, trustworthy AI from 2019, you want to be able to understand the decisions, you want it to be transparent and impactful, okay? Um, explainable AI, the responsibility. So a lot of the focus in the past has been on model performance, on decision-making, right? And now we want to go into safety, make sure we can trust it, ethics, accountability, and also regulations. Um, about six months ago, uh, this uh, article was published uh, as a result of a lot of work done on the explainable AI program. And uh, a bunch of co-authors got together and put together uh, a paper uh, that uh, starts off with brittle AI. And in our journey through this program, we have seen several big picture takeaways Explanations need to be highly tailored to the scenario. Many seemingly high performance reinforcement learning agents are extremely brittle and not amenable to explanation. When you say extremely brittle, do they meet the requirement of trustworthiness? <clears throat> I think not. A lot of the push and success in playing games and chess and you know, uh, that has made the big news about uh, AI and its capability and performance over the past decade has been ah. attributed to these black boxes. And Kuala uh, Kuala okay, that was uh, not uh, uh, intended. Please mute yourself, dear friend. Casual models allow for rich explanations, but how to present them is not always straightforward. Human subjects conjure fantastically wrong mental models of AI. So when we talk about AI and introducing that to the human, you can see that 
uh, our perception is wrong. If our perception is wrong, the interaction would not lead to uh, the uh, intended uh, utilization of that technology in the best possible manner. So it is not enough to have you know, one block black box, do a prediction and another set of black boxes, take a look at some sort of uh, sensitivity analysis and the prediction of the first black box and then come up with some interpretability criteria. You need to be able to get a good mental model, communicate that to humans because when we're talking about large scale systems, we do not envisage if, especially if it's safety critical, not to have the human in the loop. So there would be a supervisor, right? Like what we, we saw in that case of the robo taxis. You have a supervisor, you have somebody in a control room looking and monitoring the health of all your autonomous vehicles. And you wanna keep that ratio down for it to be financially viable, okay? Um, Advanced air mobility, <clears throat> which uh, constitutes the movement of people and goods in the third dimension, has got a market estimation next 25 years of $1.9 trillion. That's a lot of money. But now can you imagine this cluster of unmanned air vehicles in the air being controlled by some, something other than its intended use? Uh, that can get very scary. So you cannot move forward without being able to address this issue of how do you secure your system? How do you guarantee that the autonomous component is completely trustworthy? So a couple of years ago in February, 2019, IEEE Computational Intelligence Magazine came up with, okay, we're looking at explainable AI. What are one of the ways to get there, right? There could be several different approaches. One of the ways is evolutionary fuzzy systems. It's an area of my expertise. I've been working in there, evolutionary as in Darwin's principle of survival of the fittest and some uh, generalization of that concept. And uh, uh, it has been demonstrated that uh, this uh, capability is quite effective. One straightforward way of combining two of the most important concepts in machine learning in a natural way is to obtain this explainable artificial intelligence models uh, by means of synergy between fuzzy rule-based systems and evolutionary algorithms. Um, I started my journey into fuzzy systems uh, back in 1994. So that's about 28 years and uh, somewhere about over a decade ago after I moved to the University of Cincinnati, I started automating the rule generation as well as uh, having to uh, determine the membership functions of both the uh, uh, you know the interfaces that we have with our linguistic rules okay utilizing genetic algorithms so we've been doing this for a while we didn't call it explainability in the past uh, it was an intuition. It's relatively a small group within the big AI community doing that. But, you know, over time, there is also very good performance by these systems. So what does a fuzzy system look like, right? So you have the fuzzification. When we collect data, the data is, well, digital, usually. It could be images. It could be, uh, but something, a digitized image, a video. Uh, numerical information, there's nothing fuzzy about what we collect. But what we do here, and the term sometimes, you know, puts people off, oh, this is logic. If, if a politician uses the term fuzzy logic, it is usually in a derogatory manner. But, you know, it is a universal approximator. That means if you have an infinite set of mappings between information gathered and an outcome, a decision, okay? It could be a classifier, it could be a regressor. A fuzzy system can, in theory, provide you with that ultimate mapping. So mathematically, we have the capability, but when we decompose that, we get a set of linguistic rules that are explainable, transparent, linguistic rules as an if then, right? If it's raining and if I take an umbrella, outcome is I won't get wet. Desired, I don't want to get wet. If I want to do singing in the rain, then I can get rid of the umbrella, right? Um, what is 
the inference system about. There is a knowledge base. The knowledge base is um, a part of what the evolutionary algorithm learning takes place. And to this knowledge base, you have the, the fuzzification, this defuzzification, that's the input output in, interface. They're called membership functions or gains. Uh, but as opposed to gains, say in a PID controller, which happen to be fixed very often here, they're variable, they change based on the situation. So that provides you with more flexibility and performance. And then these are the set of if then rules we have. So we learn about these rules from data. We learn from them from say simulation, right? And that's what the genetic algorithm does. So it allows you to take this universal approximation architecture, utilize information that you gather and then come up with a set of rules which are transparent as well as that interface function, okay? Um, so the attributes of this evolutionary fuzzy system, it's got good performance. So you can get explainability without having to sacrifice on performance, okay? It's transparent, explainable, deterministic, computationally efficient. Uh, it's quite simple as far as the mathematical operations are concerned. And so, you know, you could get it to work very quickly and in real time. Uh, uh, Tim Arnett's PhD was on the verification validation using formal methods. And uh, Thales has come up with a toolbox in this area for genetic fuzzy systems. Uh, um, Tim, please say a few things about uh, the product that you are developing in this area. Scalable and robust to noise and uncertainties. The reason for that, Tim, is that I want folk on this call to know that this is not just some academic exercise that we are developing here. There is a real value to industry with the type of products can spin off from these ideas, okay? Uh, work well with incomplete and small data sets. Now, this was again prepared by uh, the uh, IEEE Computational uh, Intelligence Magazine, where they showed that deep learning neural nets can give you good performance, but very low explainability, whereas fuzzy rule-based systems have the potential of providing you with good accuracy. And some of us claim that this desired value can be out here. So we could give you very high performance while providing good explainability as well. And these are some of the other state-of-the-art systems there. Um, so the lab that I have just started up, uh, I moved into this position very recently as the director of the AI Biolab at the University of Cincinnati. You can see trustworthy AI is uh, front and center of what we're doing, but we're coupling that also with human performance ag augmentation. We need, we cannot just look at algorithms for what they are. We need to be able to connect them to a system and tailor that integration effectively to create value. Value and our uh, applications lie within DOD, health, transportation, and I can even project that into energy, food, water, and other important things for society. Uh, some of the areas that we are working on I have shared, divided this into medical and non-medical, military, civilian, the work I do at the University of Cincinnati, and this is an offshoot of the University of Cincinnati called Genexia with Mr. Dino Mottis. Um, you can see that there is a, we cover a wide spectrum. All of that is in this arena called complex engineering systems. Um, in the civilian side, you can see uh, CVG is the airport here at Cincinnati, passenger flow prediction. Um, we've patented this and uh, this is going into being developed as a product, cooperative driving automation, uh, a wide range of uh, applications uh, that we're working with. Um, this is a AAM is a advanced air mobility. This was done in conjunction with Crown Consulting uh, when we worked on a center proposal. You can see the foundations of AI. Barnabash Bede was part of this effort. Uh, automation that can mimic human intelligence in areas such as thinking, problem solving, decision making, and learning. 
explainable trust, confidentiality, security, scalability. These are the barriers that one has. And then we want to utilize and introduce these enabling technologies that is real-time learning, collaboration, you know, explainability and trustworthiness, human AI interaction. And then the barriers to this is extension to real-time assurance, dynamic environments with unknown unknowns, human control, uh, monitoring and situational awareness. These areas are not solved today. There, there are things that would allow us to get to assured autonomy in the next decade or so. And then the test bed that we are looking for is having to uh, control, manage the aerospace, optimize route planning, energy resource management, conflict detection, resolution, monitoring. These are system requirements that would come in and help us create these areas. So if I look at my area of expertise within complex engineering systems, I would foresee developing special issues in these areas and uh, encouraging people to submit papers, which I feel that would have a big market from, for industry, for investments, because if we resolve these issues, the economic benefits are huge. If I look at the advanced air mobility, if I look at autonomous driving, the problems are not resolved. They have been underestimated as far as their complexity is concerned. But in order to be able to get there in the area of health, in the area of safety, critical systems, transportation, we need to be more engaged in these problems. Now, I'll conduct a Q&A session uh, after Dr. Timanet's uh, talk. I uh, do have um, uh, two minutes to just uh, introduce Tim uh, uh, and uh, the topic itself of this competition. So this competition was uh, Tim Arnett's brainchild. Um, he came up with that. Uh, and uh, two years ago, it was initiated uh, first in a relatively long, uh, short, uh, small scale. And now we're trying to uh, blow that up. The idea is to get students engaged. We want students to be engaged in this set of problems into engaging this barriers. How better to engage students than to introduce them to it, right? So today you could get a degree in computer science at many institutions without even hearing the term evolutionary fuzzy systems or explainable AI for that matter, right? It's all about performance, 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 but that's not enough. The world is changing. The policies are changing. You need your students to get engaged. You need the community, the younger generation to be able to work out real issues that would be able to advance our society. And how better to do that than to engage them in an international student competition focused on explainable AI, focused on ability to increase your tools. So over a course of one year from September to April, we invest in students. What does it cost? Well, you've got to have your laptop, you've got to have connectivity, and you've got to invest some time. That's it. And the rewards are knowledge, ability to engage in a very fruitful ma market, and also possibly winning some of those prizes that are offered today by, by uh, Thales, by uh, Complex Engineering Systems, and by other sponsors that we hope to have. 